rose with greenish skin. So close your eyes and you will find that you've arrived in Frankenstein. Perhaps the Count will find a way to make his monster work today. For if he solves this monster mania, he can return to Transylvania. So welcome where the sun won't shine to the castle of Count Frightenstein. <laughs> we can have a quiet talk. Eh? Now, don't die. Please, don't die. Speak. All right, I'll keep yelling at you. I'm so glad you're here, Igor, because I heard a very strange sound outside. What was that? Master, I was outside, busy watching things going on in the moat. Watching things going on in the moat, eh? Yes, Master. But we have no time for these things now. For now it is time to raise the flag. Yes, Master. And to sing our glorious national anthem. Yeah, yes, Master. Okay, plunk away, babe, give it to them. Go, go, go. Transylvania. Very cute boot. Where were our woes and butts for all his name? Oh, oh so, Master, the murky boy will likely claim you yeah, as we go stumbling through. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The bandage should be on your head. I pledge by the sign of the three toed sloth that I will pal palmers, palmers, to do my best to do my duty. To always obey the laws of the werewolf buck. And to never last until Bruce he lives once more and takes his rightful place in the annals of distinguished monsters. And I can once again return to that most glorious of homelands. Transylvania. Gory, gory. Transylvania. Wow. As we yeah. go. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. No. Such taste. Shh, shh. Drink it in. What a fantastic note. What a voice. But again, explain now. What were you doing in the moat again? Yes, Master. I was watching what was going on in the moat, and there was a pirate ship there, and they were putting ashore. Well, what's wrong with putting to shore, huh? Well, Master, they were putting it on my foot. That's not the way we rehearsed it, I'm sure. <laughs> Zelda had a party that was strictly wine and cheese. The door prize was two weeks vacation with a very strange disease. The wine was very strange. In fact, I didn't recognize it. I asked Griselda for the name and where it is she buys it. <laughs> she said, dear boy, that wine's homemade. It's simple stuff to mix. You just need lye and liquid soap and then add grapes for kicks. I thanked her for the recipe, but said I don't want more. Then grabbed my hat and coat and bolted for the door! <laughs> Hi, I'm Griselda, the stumbling gourmet. <laughs> 
like to make fun of myself. You know what? They broke my bill. <laughs> A blueberry hill. And I feel it still. <laughs> it's such a thrill. Do you believe it? <laughs> Come on in to Happiness Street. <laughs> Woo! Now we're going to cook up something you're just going to love. And it's quite an involved thing. It's called Ignatius Agolent Sweet and Sour Iguana Tarts. Ooh, what a winner that sounds like. Now we're going to start this out with a real winner. One of my definite favorites, Walt. <laughs> I just love this. Ooh, wow. And then we're taking an A. And we're... Whoa! <laughs> Here we go now. A little flour. Always need a little flour in there. Oh, got some on myself. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, <laughs> Now we mix the egg and the flour all together. Isn't this lovely? Oh, and look at the treat in store for us, folks. Look at here. Oh, if I can ever get the cork. I right, did it. Salty seawater. Oh, whoo. A winner indeed. Oh, wow. My goodness. Now we just put the old poop on there. <laughs> there we go. And now we just mix it up. Now, we're off to get our last ingredient. Here we go. Come on. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. oh my goodness. It's been so long since I've been outside, I didn't know. That's a snowball. You've been playing in the snow? I never know what season it is anymore. Now, as you know, with any iguana dish, the most important ingredient is a conquat. So we'll take this squash. Come on, here we go. Oh, it's fun, fun, fun. Now, I hereby have the squash. I'll give it just a little more squash. Oh! <laughs> and in she goes. Oh! Ooh, wow, that's going to be a winner. I just know it is. Who do I remind you of? Marlene Dietrich, I know. Very similar look. Our legs are the same. <laughs> okay, here we go. Right to the cauldron. <laughs> All right, now. There it goes. There, cauldron, cauldron, toilet trouble. Cauldron boiling, cauldron bubble. Taste this time. Station identification? I didn't know they had a wallet. I like Igor. I'd have gotten sick if I'd have eaten some of Grazilda's cooking. Hold on there, Igor. Oh, it's you again. That's right, it's the Grammar Slammer. Yeah. Here again, ready to hammer in some grammar with the help of the Grammar Slammer's bammer. The Grammar Slammer bammer. First I hammer, then I bammer. Yeah. Yes, oh. but not just yet. Tell Igor that you're pleased to see him. Oh, you're pleased to see him. You won a bit. Lovely, lovely. Now, Igor, what have you been doing to the lovely English language? Doing not nothing. Yes, well, I could have sworn I just heard you say, I'd have gotten sick if I'd eaten any of Griselda's food. Wrong. Well, what's wrong with that, Igor? <laughs> Nothing, because I didn't eat any. The oh. sentence, Igor, the sentence. The hammer, Igor, the hammer. Stop. Hold on there now, Babber, give him a chance. Now, what's wrong with oh. that sentence, Igor? <laughs> I don't want to be hammered. Not that sentence, the one you said. It's poor English. <laughs> well, it's poor food. Now, let's have a look at that sentence. <laughs> now, what's wrong with saying, I'd have gotten sick? <laughs> you wouldn't have gotten sick. I have gotten sick. Oh. But you can't say, of gotten, Igor. Hammer, bammer, slammer. That's I right, bammer. 
I don't know. What do you say instead of gotten? Slammer, bammer, hammer. Uh, uh, yes, uh, well, Slammer, uh, I should have said that. Oh. Uh, hold uh, on, hold on now, boys. Let's settle down. We can clear this whole thing up if you'll just have a little patience. Now, we're trying to teach you, Igor. Oh. So just hold on, bammer. Be patient, be patient. Be patient. We'll be patient, there in a minute. Patient. Now, there's Slammer a different bammer. way to say this, and we're going to get it right once and for all. Now, Igor, I want you to play close attention, very close attention. Now, think very hard. Think how hard. How you would say that. Slammer bammer. Now, think. Slammer think. bammer. All Slammer right, bammer, now, come hammer. on, you can do it. Come on, big Slammer fellow. bammer hammer. Slammer hammer bammer. Hammer slammer Don't bammer, confuse hammer. him, bammer. Oh. Bammer, don't confuse him. Now, oh. Igor, yeah. I want you to think. Now, what is the correct way to say that sentence? <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm All thinking. All right, let's have a look at it. Okay. <laughs> and? Oh, now I know the correct way. Oh. I should have said I would have gotten sick if I'd eaten any of Grazilda's food. Oh, uh, Grammar, to that, Bammer, Rammer, Igor. <laughs> Did I say that Tomorrow? right? Tomorrow? Yes, yes. <laughs> Tomorrow, Slammer, Bammer, Igor. Well, if you're good, Bammer, but well, hold yeah. on. With any luck, there won't be tomorrow. Sure there will. <laughs> Slammer, Bammer, tomorrow. Oh. Too much. <laughs> Professor tried to figure out how mummies were preserved. They'd been around 2,000 years, much longer than they deserved. He worked on all the theories and composed existing facts that they might have all been dipped in vats of boiling candle wax. He said there's only one thing that's preserved them, so I'll bet. <laughs> the one thing they've in common is not smoking cigarettes. How do you do, my friends everywhere, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and children, and men and women, and people? I am Professor Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And before we go further into these wonderful adventures with nature, a word regarding our modus operandi. Modus operandi. On occasion, in some of these programs already done, and on those I will do further, it is clear that I have used some language now and again of an elevated sort, words like, phrases like, modus operandi and such, and the impression may be got that this is too much for young ones to hear and understand. But I am of the philosophy, having been for 60 years in the academic scene, that my singular purpose is to make everyone reach and thus their brains are stretched and their emotions moved and their spirit touched so these things that i have done and we are now doing should have virtue for the youngest and the oldest as i am given to say the stuff we do here and we talk about is good for ages three to ninety three or two to ninety two or four to ninety four indeed one year olds could enjoy what we are doing. So let's do some more of it. Here I have on strings some little wads of paper and I am going to grasp them with my fingers. And I say they are now electrostatically neutral. Now here I have a rubber rod and I say it is electrostatically neutral. About this you can explore things with your teacher. Now I am going to bring this electrostatically neutral rod near those electrostatically neutral uh, wads of paper, pith balls, and watch. Not much. Indeed, nothing happens. And nothing happening is very important. It's like in Sherlock Holmes, the dog which did not bark in the night. Now I'm going to rub this rubber rod on this piece of fur. And a most remarkable transformation has taken place. This rubber rod has a new life. Watch, watch. There we are. And they, oh, notice that. They touch the rod. They now have the same charge as the rod. And they are not only moving away from the rod, but from each other. 
And if I try to engage them, you see, I don't succeed too well. Look at that. Isn't that ter Look at that. Look at that. And so we introduce here some phenomena in electrostatics. Groovy. Yes, my dear. I'd love to split a bottle with you. <laughs> Ooh! Yes, Master. It says here that Mr. Donald Donut will pay $100 for anyone who can assist him in sleeping at night. Master, I have just the invention to assist Mr. Donald Donut and get me $100. Just one thing, Igor. Yes, Master. Not to get you. <laughs> get it, big fellow. Why not? Let's yes. find out what we got. Why not? Yes, yes. yes. Come, come. Come, come Master. Oh, it's my new invention. Oh, here we are, Master. There you are. They just go, pop, and that's it. Igor, put that thing away. That's not it at all. That's silly. Oh, no, we've got you, to get something back. You never liked my invention. Ah, well, they're just no good, that's all. You don't Why don't count. you invent something? Maybe that will do it. No, I don't think so, Igor. I think it's better that if I were to invent something. Yes, why not? Why not? I'm fully capable of such a thing. Yes, Master. Right. You are fully capable. All right. Now, tell me something, Igor. What would make you go to sleep at night? Well, Master, uh, a phone call from your mother does it every time. Wrong. Try again. Your great-grandfather used to count sheep. He had thousands of them in his backyard. Did they get them to sleep? No, they got him arrested. What for? For sheep rustling. Oh, come on, that's silly. You know what I need? Yes, master. A little of that, a little of that, a little of this. A little of this, a little of this, yes? Now, if I could only get some stardust, where can I possibly get stardust? I know where to get stardust. Where? Well, you go to Frank Sinatra or Dean Martin's vacuum cleaner, and you open it up, and you take some of the dust out, and then start us. <coughs> oh, don't be silly. That's silliness. Now, it's one thing more. Now we go on. Very good. Do you think that this brew is ready now? Yes, master. It's ready to be thrown out. Don't be smart, big fellow. It doesn't suit you. No, I'm sure it's ready. Let's give it a try. Master, I'd rather... We'll give it to Boris, all right? He can try it. Ah, oh, what's the difference? All right, let Boris have it. All right, then. Boris! Boris! I got something nice for you. There's a straw, Boris. Just put it in there. Go on, now, Boris. <laughs> Igor! It works! Yes, Master. The sleeping potion works, but unfortunately, Boris doesn't. A blessing on he who straddles the winds of ill change before pawning a left-handed pocket. Pocket watch in a full moon. <laughs> Clyde has several friends who live inside a cave and when he goes to visit them I think him very brave because those friends are grizzly bears uh, but he will have to wait before he visits them again because now they hibernate he asked them once when winter came why did they get so sleepy they said it's cheaper that way for they can't afford my ame <laughs> Zany zoo time! Never could stand them anyway. 
Hello, hello, just going through some of me drills. That's right, that's right. And how are you today? Are you feeling nice and chipper? Well, I am. Yes, you bet I am. And I've got some lovely film for you today. A flat-winged butterbird. Haven't seen one in years. Get a shot of that. Right. Yes, hello. Yes, but I'm for one o'clock batty at your service here in Zainy Zoo. I know, I just saw it. I know. I got a shot of it, I think. Oh. What's your address then? Right, I've got it. I've got it right here. Yeah. All right, I'll send you a copy of it. I know, I haven't seen one for so long myself. Right, you keep calling now. All right, and away we go. Right, bye bye. Oh, what? Right, somebody else spotted that. This is I did. But I got a shot of it right here. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, we're fine you to go. Hello. Oh, very sorry. All right. Right, my one. Didn't like your tune. <laughs> Can't win them all, can you? All right, but as we say. But, oh, I think I hurt me heels. I think I hurt me heels. All right, never mind, though. We're going over to the projector, and we're going to see something very interesting today. Might be a little scary for you, as a matter of fact. Let's have a look. All right, here we go. Now, the wheels are in place. That's right. The film is out of place, as usual. And the switch is on. And what are we going to say to say? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, what do we have here? This is a crocodile. Now, don't confuse these with an alligator. The alligator has a much longer snout on him, you see? Look at that. You want to know something? You notice his eyes there, the eyes and the nose. You notice how they're built high on his face? Look, you can see that? Well, that means he can immerse his body completely in water. That's right, and he can still see and breathe, just with a little bit showing out of the water. You've got to look at the teeth on him. Hello there. Oh, best make friends with him. My goodness. Now, they're close relatives now to caimans and, and uh, alligators. That's right. Look at that. Beware, beware. Now, they're very swift in the water. Oh, quite fast, quite fast. Look at them there. Oh, awesome. They go over to over 20 feet long, they do. That's right. They grow to 20 feet long. We, oh, I wouldn't want to meet him in some pool of water. My goodness, scare the dickens out of you, wouldn't it? Look at the teeth on him. I usually say give us a kiss, but in this case, I don't think I can. My goodness gracious. Eerie looking things. But everything is beautiful in its own way. That's right. There's a purpose for all our animal friends and our reptiles, whatever we have. That's right. All right, very nicely done. I think we better clap in case they take offense, right? Right. Take more than offense. Might take the back door, might take the house. Who knows? Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, I take offense. You get what I mean. Oh, right, very nice, too. Well, I guess it's that time again when dear old Bawana Clyde Batty has to say, you know, Ooga Booga, which in this case means if the lamplight is lit in the summertime, it's very hard to know when the lamplight will be lit in the winter. I think. All right, don't forget to go to your local zoo now. Visit your zoo and you have lots of fun and take your camera along. Take picture like that of all the lovely creatures. All right now, off to take some more film, are you? But while a client should make a film of the sloth. Don't worry, it'll be over in a minute, I think. I hope. The librarian, he sure likes to sleep a lot. The librarian never lends out books to anyone, in fact. He says the reason for it is he never gets them back. <laughs> <laughs> 
But there was just one book I wanted that all my friends had read before. <laughs> so I asked him, may I borrow it? All that he did was roar. So you want a book now, do you? And think borrowing's just groovy. Instead of coming for the book, you should have gone to see the movie. news. Ah, here's one that's sure to get you. No, I don't like that one. Ah, yes. Little Tommy Tittlemouse lived in a little house. He caught fishes in other men's ditches. No, I didn't frighten you with that. Why, that shook me to the very foundations when I first read it. It was horrifying. Listen again. Little Tommy Tittlemouse lived in a little house. He caught fishes in other men's ditches. Don't you realize the significance of a thing like that? Well, I guess I got my answer on that. Well, now... Now, the librarian grows weary. And so, I must say goodbye until we meet again. Goodbye. Goodbye. When I joined, membership was only $25. And there was no building fund either. <laughs> Glonk! <laughs> ah, Glonk, how are you today? Hello, Count. What you got there? Tell me something, Glonk. Do you know any long-distance swimmers? Sure, my Aunt Julius. Oh, how far did she swim? Well, see, she was on this ocean liner in the middle of the ocean, yes. see? When suddenly she fell overboard and knew she had to swim to shore. Well, how did she know which way to swim? Well, she just followed along behind the liner. What? <laughs> 
Do you know any real long-distance swimmers, truly? No, not really, no. Well, this book may be able to help because it tells you everything you ever wanted to know about long-distance swimmers. Really? What's it called? It's called everything you ever wanted to know about long-distance swimmers. <laughs> you wrong. <laughs> Okay, what does it say there? Okay, well, it says that long-distance swimming is no longer as popular a sport as it used to be. Sure. It is very exhausting and... And you get wet. And you get wet. Well, well of course you get wet. <laughs> we know that. You're in the water, are you not? Sure. All right. Now, it's very exhausting and it takes a long time. Sure. Now, one of the early swimming men was to swim the English Channel. But now sure. this has been accomplished by men and women. Sure. And even children. Did you know that? And fish. And e fish. <laughs> All right. So fish. Wrong. Please, you stop that. You always sure. upset me. But it can even be swum by a blind person. Gee. Yes. Now, another goal was... To swim on dry land. To swim on dry land. <laughs> Wrong. Oh, will you please <laughs> stop it? You're always doing that to me. No. Now... It says here to swim on dry land. No, no, not to swim on dry land. That's silly. <laughs> All right. Another gotcha. goal has been to swim the Great Lakes. While holding your breath. While holding your breath. No, no, it's not while holding your breath. Not while holding oh, your will breath. You please no. cooperate with me. Sure. All right, Just now. trying to help. Hmm. Curiously enough, the finest long-distance swimmers are often women. Really? Hmm. How about that? Let's right. hear it for the girls and the long-distance swimmers. They have nicer bathing suits. Do you remember any long-distance swimmers? Well, there is one. Oh, who? It's my Uncle Dreadnought. He set out to swim around the world in 1926. Well, that was kind of foolish while of him, was it not? Oh, no, not really. We're expecting him to turn up any day now. Oh. <laughs> Gronk, I give up with you. You're <laughs> terrible. Gronk. <laughs> Ruby! <laughs> Elga Boga. You'll never guess what's coming next. Hey, you know, my wife and I like to go drinking at all the better spots. You know, places like the elbow, the twisting wrist, the hip and tibia, all the... Not funny? All right, lunch time. <laughs> A man who came to Pet Vet said, Please, doctor, save my wife. I know that she's not pretty, but she shouldn't lose her life. <laughs> Pet Vet said, I can't do that. The animals I treat are beavers, cats, and little mice, the kind both small and sweet. The man said, that just suits me fine. I know this may sound lousy, but I came here because people think my wife is rather mousy. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Dr. Kedvet. I have him here with me, and I have the letter on the table. I'm going to read it now. Yes. Okay, doctor, thank you. I remember pets are friends, yes. <laughs> Oh, what a nice dog you are. Oh, you're so beautiful. I'm going to read my letter now. You be a good dog, eh? Dear Igor, what I am sending you here is a borzoi. B-O-R-Z-O-I. Which means in Russian, speed. Oh, he's a fast runner. He's formerly known here as the Russian wolfhound. And he's been a hunter in Russia for several centuries. By crossing the Arabian Greyhound and a native Russian breed similar to the Collie, the result is this graceful and elegant dog known as the Borzoi. He's got a wavy, heavy and curly coat. Yes, he has. Dr. Pedbert is right in his letter again. And his long and gracefully curved tail. Oh, what a beautiful dog you are. Also, this dog has got long legs. Yes, my name is Igor, you see. <laughs> Back to the letter. He has extreme speed. Well, that's understandable because of the long legs. And uh, they have great courage, these dogs. And they battled with wild wolves many years ago in Russia. This dog is a very aristocratic dog, and his name is Simon the Black Prince. 
See, his height is 28 to 31 inches, and he weighs from 75 to 105 pounds. Oh, yes, Dr. Petvet. Really, I know that. You shouldn't keep a dog like this in an apartment or in a small place. He needs lots of room to run around, and he wouldn't be comfortable in a small place. He's a very slender and streamlined feature, the letter continues, and he has a shaggy effect in the coat. In simple terms, it looks like a hairy greyhound, except for its head. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> this Dr. Petvedi he knows everything about pets. Also special, pets are friends. I'm going to phone the slot and ask him if I can keep you. Don't go there, hang on. I'll use the internal extension. How are you, Mr. Slot? Yes? Uh, you don't have to give your answer right away. You can have a few moments thought if you like. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Yes, goodbye. <laughs> you can stay with me. And I'd like to keep you here. Come, I have to take you back. When I'm calling... Oh! He did it again, master. He did it again. Why is that, Igor? Why would he run away from you all the time? He just put his eye on me and split. I can't understand. You're a good-looking, green-colored boy. Yes, master. A fine-looking fellow. And I got the mail and everything. Very good. Now, what have we got in the mail here? Can I open this big parcel first? Absolutely not, Igor. But what you may do is to open the parcel first. Yes, master. Very good. It's, it's from Chan's Hand Laundry. Chan's Hand Laundry? Yes, master. Why would I... What would Chan's Hand Laundry want? Wait a minute. You mean... Is it? Yes, is master. It? It's the hand you sent to be cleaned. They're nice and clean, Master. Uh, Igor. Yes, Master. If I've told you once, I've told you once. Please, no starch. Forgot, Master. You're always forgetting. Now, what else is in the mail? <laughs> yes, Master, I have a letter. Uh, from the Frankenstone Sloth Tow Company Limited. Very good. Read it to me, please. Yes, Master. I'll have to take it out of the envelope first. We usually do that, Igor. <laughs> oh, dear Count. That's, That's you. Good, of course. <laughs> In reference to your letter dated May 1752, <laughs> sir, we are sorry for the delay in replying to your letter. But we have many orders and just one slot. <laughs> I'm glad they got one slot, because we got one, it's more than I can handle. That's true. <laughs> your request for a three toed slot, our part, number 802, cannot be filled at this time as we are only producing the two-toed model. Oh, that's very disappointing to me. And also it says, thank you. Well, at least I get a little thank you out of it. <laughs> All right, Igor, hey, what is that pamphlet? What oh, does it say? Oh, it's from the Frankenstein Unreal Estate Company. Ah, good, read it to me. It says, are you tired of unpredictable weather? I can tell you for a fact, I'm tired of unpredictable weather. There's more, masters. Of course I know there's more. Real. If so, come to Cape Corpuscle on the sea for just a dollar, 380 down, and a balance of a small fortune in easy payments, you can retire in a tropical paradise. This is fantastic, Igor. Fantastic, Master. Tropical paradise. I need it. I need the rest after all the work with Brucey and so on. <laughs> but, Master, oh. Master. What? What is it? What I'm is not it? finished yet. Well, hurry up, read it. No dogs or monsters allowed. <coughs> Brucey has to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I 
went to see the oracle to have him read my hand. I found him sitting on the throne and looking very grand. I'm very good at palms, he said. My system never fails. By merely looking at your hands, I see you bite your nails. There's something I must warn you of. One thing I can't endure. I will not read your fate until you get a manicure. <laughs> Before you assist the greatest of the living oracles, I have made more predictions than anyone else. I have read more palms than anyone else. I have contacted more spirits than anyone else. And I've also dropped a few crystal balls in my time. But never mind that. For now, we must get to our sign for today. Ah, oh, wistful mist that the gods have kissed. Which sign, what name, the future twist? Ah, and our sign today is Sagittarius. Aha, that is, all the kids born between November 22nd and November, and December, excuse me, 21st, yes. The symbol for this sign is the archer, half man and half horse. Isn't that interesting? Hmm, quite a combination. SPCA. We seem to have a little bit of trouble out there. Yes, could you come over and get the sloth? Yes, it's outside. Thank you very much. Yes, okay, goodbye. And now, to get back to business, enough of this foolishness. Here, we will take our spare crystal ball. Excuse me, Buddha. And we have made our normal mistake, haven't we? Well, here we are. Oh, magic crystal, crystal ball, tell me now. Tell me all. Ah, yes, yes. Now, the prediction for today, Sagittarius kids out there, your life may now seem to be in a bit of a grind. Uh-huh. Sagittarius, nothing is going wrong. But then again, nothing is really going right either, which I think is a pretty insane thing to say. <laughs> What's the matter, Igor? I stopped to think. Now I can't seem to get started again. We'll be back in a minute, right after this commercial. It's a, it's a commercial. Commercial, that's it. We'll be back. Commercials are a grammar slammer. I am the wolf man. You're gonna lend me his little voodoo bell. All right, this is the Wolf Man. Now I'm coming to you through radio station EHCH. Brought to you by the Count and his drag cola company. A loser. Hello, I am the Wolf Man. Francine, what's happening with you, babe? Yeah, sure, I'm having a ball. Oh, that's nice of you to say that. Oh, that's the name of the song. Okay, baby, you dig that tune? You got it. Talk to you soon. Right. Bye-bye. And she says it's nice to be with you. Our dad was by the monkeys back in 1968. And that's what we're going to do. But first, chime time. Didn't sound right. Sounds better. Ooh. Zero hour. Zero hour. The Wolfman Station. Not bad listening. Out of sight. One more day card in the dead letter office. And how are you today, Harvey? Slump getter? No, no, no. <laughs> it's Harvey Wallbanger. Of course, yes. Harvey Lamslinker. Wallbanger. Wallbanger. I'm so sorry. I keep getting that mixed up. Well, is there any mail for the count today, Harvey? Let me just check here. Uh, your wish is my command. Uh, of we'll course. For the letters. Uh, da -da, da -da 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 -da. Please hurry. I haven't much time. Da -da. How much time have you got? Well, I think I would have probably. Let's see. I would have. Oh, uh, I'll have to go in a minute. Okay. Ah! Here's your letter. Perhaps sooner. Yeah. 
Where is the ladder? Is this it? That's ah, it. to the car. That's right. Very good. Thank you. And this one says, Dear Count, is it true that Griselda never brushes her hair? Signed, Arnie. Arnie, I'm going to send you a picture. And I'm afraid it is true. I've never seen her with a brush in my life. Only a mixing spoon. But that's how it goes. But you're you can't supposed be beautiful. to brush your hair. Of course you are, but you can't be beautiful and have talent too, can you? That's true. Other than myself, of course. Ah, 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 well, until ah, we meet again there, Harvey. Jokes. Button loop. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, it's Wallbanger. Transylvania, here I come. Wait for me. The castle lights are growing dim. There's no one left but me and him. When next we meet in Frankenstone, don't come alone.